welcome. Thank you to anybody that's joined our webinar this evening. We are hoping to offer you some really useful insights if you are going to be looking for a postgraduate role, if you are somebody that's just completing their A-levels um, and potentially looking for a new position. Equally, if you're looking to retrain, this is a really good opportunity for you to um, listen to some people that are doing the job and also learn a little bit about what we're able to offer as a firm. So just to do some introductions then. So my name's Leanne. I am a Head of Talent Acquisition and Resourcing for McIntyre Hudson. I've been with the firm for five years. I look after you know, everything talent acquisition and deployment of staff in the organisation. I came from a completely different sector before I joined accountancy and I haven't looked back, I love it. Um, we've also got Dan who's kindly joining us this evening. He's a tax supervisor for the firm, joined us in 2017 holds his uh, Association of uh, Tax Technicians qualification already and his Chartered Tax Advisor qualification as well. And we've got Abby with us as well. Um, and she joined as Tax Senior in 2019 and is currently studying for her Chartered Tax Advisor qualification. The CTA qualification is a really prestigious qualification. And if you look worldwide, there really aren't that many people that hold that qualification. So it really is an excellent um, thing to study for. So just a little bit of housekeeping then. So we have got a Q&A box. If you've got any questions and please do ask them because you know we would love to answer as many of your questions as we possibly can. Do put them in the Q&A box rather than the chat. Um, that's so that we can answer as many of those questions online as we can, but also if there's anything that we can't answer straight away or don't get round to, we can come back to you after the event. If you've got further questions after this evening or you want to apply for a vacancy with us, there's the recruitment email address just there. Um, you're very welcome to field any queries. Equally, if you just want to know a little bit more about trainee recruitment cycles, if you want to talk to us about um, entry criteria or anything that you think might support you with your job search, we will do our very best to help. So as I say, that recruitment email address is a really good place for you to go and field those queries. So what do we help our clients with then? So we need to add value to businesses. We won an award with Accountancy Age in 2020, uh, Resilience Award, for the advice that we offered to our clients during the pandemic. You know, we are working with, in many cases, very commercially viable, successful businesses. So we need to be able to add value to those businesses and be a step ahead. We need to be able to step back and offer a fresh perspective Audit, I always like to think of, I mean, I'm putting these in very simplistic terms. Um, auditors are the detectives of the accountancy world. They need to question, communicate and analyse. Corporate finance, so the negotiation, buying and selling of businesses. Fraud and financial investigations. And then tax. And you say tax, but actually tax is very nuanced. And there's lots and lots of different areas of tax as well. When you think about personal tax, corporation tax, research and development, human capital advisory, employment tax. There's lots and lots of different areas that sit within that. So I just wanted to do a bit of a poll um, and just find out from you what skills you believe or competencies would make for the most effective tax advisor. So if you can pick your top two skills and competencies from the following list that you think would make the most effective tax advisor. So a poll will pop up in just a moment. Okay, so your options are mathematics, creative thinker, loan working, report writing, skilled communicator, vertical thinking, passive stakeholder management. So if you can pick two of those. Okay, so we've got the results here. So 40% believe that mathematics is required Skilled communicator, 80%. Uh, we've got creative thinker, loan working, report writing. I apologize for my uh, typo there of vertical thinking. So thank you very much for taking part in that. So here's what we think is gonna make the most effective tax advisor. So you have to have some aptitude for numbers in any of the roles that we've got within our kind of accountancy area within our business, however, a, technology does a lot of the number crunching, but B, it's about a lot more than that. Numbers mean nothing unless you can make them meaningful. So 
I mentioned earlier about adding value to businesses that in many cases are top of their game already. So it talks about here that progressive thinking. So we need to be able to be a step ahead. Um, we need to be on our game. We need to have diversity in our thinking. We need to be able to sometimes challenge a client's thinking in the right way. We need to be able to challenge a process or an idea. And we need to be able to work absolutely as a team. So, you know, I put about that. I think I had a perception before I joined accountancy. I had this image in my mind, albeit I kind of knew it was an outdated image um, of a dusty desk and somebody behind the dusty desk. And we are so far removed from that. The teams, the buzz within the office is amazing, which is why it's so great to have um, time back in the office together now. We learn by osmosis. We learn by it from each other. We... Um, we, we workshop things, we come up with new and in, innovative ideas together. So teamwork is absolutely critical for us. And we need to be a strategic advisor to those businesses. Client interaction from the very beginning, when you first start with our organisation, we, our trainees have lots and lots of client contact. And that's really important, both for your development, but also to be able to um, really build those skill sets early on. And of course, yes, you need to be an effective communicator. So just a little bit of a snapshot of McIntyre Hudson. So we were one of the original ICAW, which is Institute of Chartered Accountants Firms, established in 1880. So we've been around for a minute. Um, we've got 10 offices. We've got around 95 partners across our business. It does you know, vary a little bit as people retire and, and get promoted and about 900 staff. So we've grown hugely. We were 20th in the top 20 when I joined five years ago and we're now 12th. So good going and we've got a real broad client mix so small to medium sized enterprises aims listed FTSE 100 listed companies as well and own and managed businesses and we've got a national and international footprint which I'll tell you a little bit more about so as I mentioned we've got 10 offices so you can see the offices just here Cayman Islands is um a little way out and I am still trying to get an invite to Cayman Islands I haven't swung it yet but give me time but you can see we've got a footprint kind of from Leicester and Birmingham down through to Kent within our country now we do have clients all over the country and internationally as well um, but that's where our offices are based we are part of a national network called MHA and we are also part of an international network which is Baker Tilly so MHA, Baker Tilly and McIntyre Hudson, we are all part of the same network and we work very, very closely together. What that means for you is international secondments are available once you qualify. We have a young professionals network, which means you get to network with peers throughout the world, which is really interesting. There's lots of global committees that you can get involved in. And importantly for us, it supports with our access to lots and lots of different types of specialists and allows us to pitch for larger work and further supports the growth of our firm. So why train with us then? Um, we offer you a broad scope in your role. So as I mentioned already, there's lots and lots of different areas of tax. When you join our firm, and I'll let Dan and Abby talk a little bit more about this in a moment, you will get access to lots and lots of different types of clients lots of different types of complex work. The more exposure we can give you early on, the more rounded tax advisor you'll become. We're big enough to count, but small enough to care. So, you know, we are a challenger firm for big four. Um, we punch above our weight with the work that we do, but equally we haven't lost our people-centric and people-first planning approach. So our personal development plans and our careers pathways are incredibly important to us. You would have a coach and an office mentor to support you. About 42% of our workforce are training at any one time. So you will get lots and lots of support from people that have been where you are not so long ago to support you through your training contract. You would study with other McIntyre Hudson students. And I've just given you a bit of an idea on how many people we've got going through that pathway. International secondments, as I mentioned, are available. Award-winning training. So our HR people team and our learning and development team have won numerous awards for the support that they offer to our staff. So we offer lots of um, support within the business, but that people team is really focused on getting people through um, their training contracts in good shape. And importantly, the more experience you gain and the more exams you pass, you get more money. If you're, not, if you're plan, not planning to go to university and you're worried about missing out on the university life, fear not. 
We have social committees in every office and we do lots and lots of social events. So some of those are charity events. I think Northampton and Milton Keynes are just about to go on the Thames. They've hired a boat and they're gonna go on a, on a river cruise. Um, you know, I've been punting in Peterborough, done cheese and wine evenings. So there's always different things. We've got um, sports teams in, in different offices so netball, cricket, football, lots of things going on for you to get involved in. So, you know, yes, we work hard uh, and we work smart, but we have a really good time doing it. And then in the top left of that slide as well, that is one of our offsite student inductions. So if you're successful with a role with us, you get to go offsite for two days. Um, and spend some time learning about McIntyre Hudson, learning some technical skills, and also a nice meal where our chairman and the partners come to. So I will stop talking and I'm gonna introduce Dan and Abby. So I think um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. And as I say, Dan and Abby are the ones that are doing this job. So I'm gonna let their superior knowledge take it over from here. Right, uh, thank you very much for that, Leanne. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Dan. Um, I'm currently a tax supervisor um, at Northampton, which means I'm, I'm just below kind of management level. Um, as, a, as, in, uh, as it was a put in Leanne's uh, presentation, I joined uh, McIntyre Hudson in uh, September 2017. It's coming up on five years now. Uh, joined straight from sixth form. Um, so I'd literally, because I'm, I'm an August birthday, I'm a late birthday, so I'd literally just fresh face turned uh, 18. Uh, when I when I walk into the office, um, and I've had a great five years, and I've, I've never looked back. Um, bit of a bit of kind of a summary of what we're going to go through. Um, I'll I'll let Abby introduce herself in a second. Um, but essentially, what what we're going to do is run through uh, what a tax advisor is, um, and I'm going to kind of take you through kind of you know what what's the what's the stereotypical um, perception of a tax advisor, and then kind of walk through how. Or what, 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 what about that stereotype isn't correct uh, and kind of, you know, the skills that we actually need and require. Um, I'll then go through a, a little bit about kind of life at McIntyre Hudson. Um, so kind of the, the, the type of clients that we work on, um, how McIntyre Hudson is, is a great place to work compared to other firms. Um, so obviously there's, the, there's a big pull of, of the big four in the accountancy world. It's important that, you know, that we stand out amongst um, the wide range of accountancy firms that there are in the UK. Um, I'll then uh, let Abby go on to, uh, to talk through uh, some of the taxes that we work with and, uh, and that we have the opportunity to specialise in and help our clients with. Um, then I'll let Abby go on to, uh, uh, to go through some of our training. Uh, so as, uh, as Leanne said, uh, we do a lot of our training uh, in firm and together, but we do also do external training for our uh, professional courses and exams. Um, and then uh, I'll finish off with, with a little bit about kind of uh, uh, our social side of things. So I'm, I'm both myself and Abby are um, uh, working in the Northampton office. Uh, I'm part of the social committee in the Northampton office. So we'll go through a, a few of the things that, um, uh, that we've done previously and that we, you know, we, the firm likes to do. And, um, and then we'll, um, we'll tie that up and go into a Q&A. Um, so if I'll, I'll just let Abby um, introduce herself quickly. Yeah, thanks, Dan. So I'm Abby. I'm a tax senior. So I'm just on the last couple of steps before I qualify. I joined in 2019 um, around August time as a graduate. So I graduated with a finance degree. Um, and yeah, so I'll pass you back to Dan. Cool. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, one, when myself and Abby sat down, we, fit, we, we was chatting to each other and said, what, what do we want to kind of talk about in this session? And, um, and the first thing I did was I went onto Google and I, I typed into Google, what is a tax advisor? And um, it spat back out at me. It said a, a tax advisor is a financial professional who provides advice on strategies to minimise taxes owed while staying within the scope of law and regulation. And, uh, and we, we kind of, you know, we pondered on that for a little bit. And that's quite an intimidating definition of, of our job. Um, you know, it's 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 very techy, and, and a tax you know a, a tax advisor's job is to be comfortable with legislation, and uh, and to have good technical knowledge. But it's so much more than that. Um, so I'd like to um to amend that definition. Um, and in reality, you know, a, a tax advisor is is a trusted business advisor, um, who helps their clients to uh, to navigate the growth of their businesses, 
um, and the various problems that arise through that journey of setting up your business, then going on and being successful in selling it, um, as well as as everything and anything in between. Um, so we deal with a lot of a lot of clients who um who they sell their business, you know, maybe they've, they've made quite a lot of money off of it, and then they sit there with all this cash and go, right, what what's next? You know, what's what's the next adventure? And um, and our our job is to go on those journeys with them and to um and to be you know a real trusted advisor. Um, to, to hold their hand most as they're, um, as they're walking through these exciting times. Um, so just, I mean, a, a little bit about accountancy. So obviously accountancy is a service-based industry. Um, so the firm sells us, you know, we, we charge them, we charge our time um, to our clients and they pay for our time. Um, so it's important that we're able to, um, to portray ourselves as professionals. Um, but uh, more than anything, as people that they enjoy working with, um, you know, a lot of our work, it's, it's side by side of our clients. And so, you know, as much as much as we work for a different company, we're working with them, working alongside them. Um, and as such, a, you know, a successful relationship is built on, on building trust between us and our clients. Um, and I suppose one, one of the greatest things, certainly that I, I love about, um, about my job, um, especially in tax, is being able to kind of take ownership of a, of a portfolio of clients. And, um, and take real pride in, in delivering a you know a great service um, to them and and to again to go on that journey with them and um, and say it's it's, re it's really nice when you kind of, you know you start off you come into the firm uh, you may be helping on helping on a few of a few of the other guys its clients uh, you get your own allocation and you think right you know I can really take control of this I can really put my stamp on this and uh, and give a really really good service to these people and, and build relationships with them. Because at the end of the day, that's what accounts is. That's what tax is. It's about um, about relationships. Um, so I suppose just just going going back onto what Leanne said about you know the, the skills that the tax advisor needs um, and the stuff that we do. Uh, so number crunching isn't that heavy, if at all, really. I mean, you know, as advisors, a lot of our job is um, is is telling our clients what they should do, and that includes numbers. And the numbers are the, you know, with tax, the numbers are the, are the reason for, for a lot of things. But the, the key parts of our job and, and the integral part of our job really is taking these numbers and giving them meaning and saying, right, okay, well, this is this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to implement a structure maybe or, um, or you know, we'll change an existing structure and this is the tax it's going to save and this is why it's going to work. And it's that key point at the end of this is how it's going to work that is the drive of everything. You know, tax is a tax is important. Money every day. If every business owner cares about cash in their pocket, um, but our jobs is to make not just the, the best decision tax wise, but the best decision for someone's business, and the and the best decision um, for what what commercially makes sense for them. Um, yeah. So as I say again, uh, obviously it's it's great. It really is great to see to, to go through that journey with your clients. Um, and along that journey, um, and along the journey kind of within tax, uh, you will develop a, a number of skills that are, that are transferable all throughout, not just the finance industry, but throughout life. Uh, so, you know, we take people on, as I said, I joined, I literally just turned 18. I've been 18 for two weeks. Um, joined McIntyre Hudson and thought, right, let's, you know, let's, let's get my teeth stuck in. Um, and... Over these five years, I've grown not just professionally. You know, I'm a chart. I'm a chart tax advisor now. I like to think I do a half decent job. Um, but um, but also as a person, you know, I've grown exponentially. I'm able to to sit here and talk to people, um, and do kind of you know, train other members of staff. So we have a when we have a new intake, we um, uh, we have kind of rent out like a kind of a business. I call it a spa, Leanne. It is a spa, isn't it, Why Boston? Yeah, <laughs> uh, we were out kind of a business spa and we, we you know, we, we give people an introduction to the firm. I, I presented at that, which is something I, I never would have even imagined I'd be doing five years ago. Um, so I'm just going to I'm, I'm just going to roll off a few skills we kind of come up with that, that we develop. So, I mean, we analyse and interpret financial information, which long story short is looking at numbers and knowing what the numbers mean. But that's 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 not a skill that's easy to acquire. Um, but that's something that that we will take you through, and we will we will help you learn um, strong communication skills. Um, so I mean, as I've, as I've said, you know, tax rules 
aren't always complex to us. You know, we're tax advisors. We do we train for it, and it's our job. Um, but to a lot of these business owners who are, you know, they're, they're, they're trying to understand these rules alongside building a business, which um, which is exhausting enough as it is, um, we need to be able to communicate things in a way that is simple and sets out the key points and that and tells them what they need to know. Because at the bottom line, that's that's what they're paying for, paying us for. Um, you know, the detail is important and it's integral that we get 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 to an end structure in the right way. But for these business owners, they want to know why, why is this structure going to work for me? Uh, they might want to know how the tax works, but I haven't met a business owner yet. Who cares that much? Um, so, the, you know, the, mon the money is the, is, is the end goal. Um, and being able to, to present that to people is, um, is really is a real key skill. Um, keep going on to report writing. We do a lot of reports and advice notes for our clients. Um, teamwork, you know, we won't be certain. Um, so we're constantly liaising with um, with the audit and accounts departments um, to, uh, to to get stuff done. Uh, and again, working with our clients, uh, teamwork isn't just about back of the Hudson. It's about being able to work with our clients as well uh, and make sure that everything is um, is going smoothly. Uh, uh, organisational skills, as with any kind of professional um, uh, job, um, you know, need to be organised. Uh, it needs to be timely and make sure that uh, we have various deadlines that um, that we have to go through in our jobs and make sure they're met. Um, and then the final one, which I think is 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 really key, is is the identification of and solving of problems. Um, so tax is is one big problem to be solved. You know, we have all these um, all these uh, scenarios going on, uh, and it's our job to identify where problems may arise and to um. Uh, to communicate that to our clients and solve those problems, um, but also to identify opportunities. Um, so tax isn't always doom and gloom. Uh, you know, there, there are lots of opportunities that we can um, that we can identify and help our clients understand. Um, and that's you know that's that's as much of the job as anything else is being able to identify those opportunities ahead of time um, and help our clients out. Um, just a little bit on life at MH. I know uh, Leanne covered quite a lot of this, but we're we're a, a top twelve uh, accountancy firm. Uh, which is great because we're we're big enough that we matter, um, but small enough that we care. That's a great um, uh, recruitment line, by the way. Yeah, I'm not quite sure we'd come up with that, but uh, <laughs> give them a raise. Uh, so we uh, we take on lots of trainees. Um, so we have we have an intake every September, and sometimes we take take people on intermittently. Um, so you're always learning with a group of people, which is so important for these you know these professional qualifications because they're hard. You know, they really are hard and there are going to be times where you sit there and think, oh, I can't do this. Um, so having that shoulder to lean on and that, you know, people to give you that motivation to push on really is really is key and is, is, is a really big advantage to working at a firm like McIntyre Hudson. Um, and, and again, you know, just just talking about that kind of the, the diversity of work that we get. Um, we take businesses through from, you know, small startups all the way to to large multinational businesses. Um, so getting that range of work and that diversity um, is, is great professionally, it's great on your CV, um, but it, it gives you a, a real diverse workload as well. You know, every, every day is different. And, um, and I think that's the most important thing about kind of an office role is going in and thinking, right, you know, I'm gonna do something interesting today. Because not, not, not every office, office role is interesting. Um, you know, there, there, are, there are bits of intact, there are bits of my job. I sit there and think, for God's sake, I've got to do that. But, um, but it's having those interesting bits to look forward to that get you through and having the interesting people to, um, uh, to drag you through the day as well. Um, uh, so uh, I think that's probably about me. Um, I'll let um, Abby just go through um, a few of the taxes that we deal with. Um, so go ahead. Yeah, so um, as Dan was saying earlier, we had a bit of a bit of a chat about what we wanted to talk about on this seminar and um, one of the key areas was what we do day to day and the different types of taxes we see so at MHA we like to make well-rounded tax advisors so to start with you sort of get your foot in the door with everything um, and then if you want to specialise that option is is there for you so um, the first tax that sort of everybody comes across would be income tax national insurance so this is on anything you earn so we see high net worth individuals who are earning millions right now to bob next door he's earning 
two grand and just needs to pay the tax on that. So that's something that's um, really interesting. And that includes in unincorporated businesses as well. So your partnerships, your sole traders. Um, and then sort of stemming off that is your capital gains tax. So that's um, when you sell assets, property, shares. So we see this quite a lot with um, owner-managed businesses. So individuals who own their businesses and want to sell it, they have to pay tax on any sales and things. And um, that's quite a key area we're seeing that annually and that's just growing ever more. Um, and then another really common one is business tax. So companies earning, whether it's your corner shop down the road or, you know, Tesco, they've all got to pay corporation tax. So we do the corporation tax returns for them, but also trying to save the money through research and development claims where people are making scientific, scientific breakthroughs. We just, have to make sure that they're getting as much tax saving on that as possible um, and also with that is companies buying assets buying properties there's all tax laws around that and many tax savings they can get from that um, another area that people often forget is inheritance tax so it's not just when you die <laughs> you got to think about it with sort of every transaction you make um, so passing it on efficiently setting up trust to hold your assets we have a lot of high net worth clients who just are panicking because they want to get the, the value onto their children and without being loads of tax. So we do a lot of inheritance tax. A lot of that comes with our report writing and planning and making sure they've got steps in for the future. Um, and then the last area, which tends to be one that um, we have a specialist team for at MHA, but there's still availability would be our indirect taxes so that's your specialist VAT advisors and your stamp duty and stamp taxes um, so that's a more broader area but definitely something that we cover at MHA um, and so as like a tax senior I've probably had my foot in the door for all of that and that's something I really like about MHA is that I've been able to go into the firm and touch on everything and see what I like um, with when I qualify, I'll be able to branch out into more specialist areas if I want. So yeah, I really enjoy that about working here. Um, and with that, um, we don't just do that as our day to day, we do a lot of other things. So me and Dan were planning what else we do. <laughs> we had a longer list than this, but I've condensed it into some key areas. So we do a lot of private client work. Um, we don't necessarily do their day to day taxes, but you know, structuring their assets and affairs. They might have other properties, they might have assets abroad, and we just need to make sure that they're not getting caught by any laws and needing to pay the government loads of money. Um, we do a lot of company reconstructions. So that's a lot of report writing, working alongside the lawyers to make sure that everything's smooth, all the documentation's finalized, and that the transaction is not gonna cause any problems. Um, and that can be anything from you know, a one million pound purchase to millions and millions of pounds with the larger companies and the larger groups. Um, and I've just done one that had 17 overseas companies and we had to work out the tax implications for each country. So yeah, we do um, due diligence. Again, that's alongside sales of companies. So that's checking historic tax data for the company, checking that it's all been dealt with correctly um, and making sure that the assurance is there when the company comes to buy the other company, that everything's in order and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, another key one would be our venture capital trusts and reliefs for investments. There's multiple types of them, but we have clients earning significant money that want to invest it really wisely. And there's more tax efficient options than others. So it's again, the planning and the report writing to make sure that they're making the best decision for a tax, yeah, a tax efficient decision. Um, and so from that, I just want to touch on training because, well, Dan's qualified now, but I'm still in the training process. So I thought I'd pick up this bit. So um, coming into MHA as a tax advisor, um, you will start on your ATT and then you'll progress onto your CTA. So each qualification takes about 18 to 24 months on average, so you have to have at least three years of experience to be able to qualify as CTA. Um, and then in total, it's nine exams. So it's three written for ATT and three computer-based exams, and then three more written for CTA. 
ATC is more of a compliance based exam structure and CTA is more of developing your advisory skills and the advanced knowledge needed to produce advisory reports and such. Um, these are usually done outside of work. So you go off to college. I went to Birmingham. You go a couple of days every so often um, with people from all over the country, all different firms, which is really good for networking. Um, but they come back to work and you apply it. Um, so although you're learning so much at work, the knowledge from doing these qualifications alongside it is really key and then you bring it back and apply it to the real world situations um, and on top of that McIntyre Hudson offers so much internal training um, so since I've started we've had an annual residential course so well apart from COVID but you go off for a couple of days with people at the same level of you so you get to meet people from all over the country um, who are at the same level of you and you just develop your communication skills, your knowledge, um, and just networking is just a really key skill to develop in this industry. Um, but also locally, we do a lot of courses. So, I mean, we had one this afternoon, a virtual one where we were online and as a team, we did training on a specific subject, but also between offices, I've been down to London for courses on either key topics or development skills. And so there's plenty of training if you join MHA. Um, and from that, there's great pathway for promotion when you develop these skills. I think Dan would agree with that. They're just pushing you for the next level at always. So, yeah. Dan, do you want to talk about what else happens in the world of McIntyre Hudson? Yeah, sure. Uh, I will just uh, go back just to touch on that promotion pathway point, Abby. Um, so I think one, one of the great things about McIntyre Hudson and being a, a, a mid-size mid firm is that um, management are really keen to push you to your limits and to, to you know, and to help you develop the skills to, to take you on that next step, um, which isn't necessarily the case at, at every firm. You know, some, some of the large firms can very much be sink or swim, um, whereas at MacHud, you know, we want to develop people. We don't want it to be a matter of, oh, you know, they're this is how they are, you know, we can't develop them anymore, so they're not going to get promotion. And it's about, well, right, what can we do to help them progress? What can we do to help them build the skills that they need to take the next step up? Um, and that's that's awesome from, from a career point of view. Um, so on to kind of social side, favourite bit. Um, so um, uh, the size of firm that we are at MH, um, obviously nearly 900 employees, um, we have some really great, really great social stuff. Um, so uh, as Leanne said, we're going to have a, uh, between Northampton and Milton Keynes, got a Thames boat party that I'm going to miss because I'm in Grand Canaria and I'm, I'm, re I'm really annoyed about that, but um, we'll that's what I get for bucket. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That's what no, I get no, for I was say, no sympathy, you're going to be in Grand nah. Canaria. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have liked to them both. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we've, we've got, got boat party coming up. We have um, annual Christmas parties and, and spring balls. Um, so for the spring, but spring balls are really great. We'll hire out a venue. We'll all get dressed up in tuxes uh, and uh, and dresses um, and uh, and go and have go and have a meal and have a good time, a bit of a disco. Um, and then we kind of have intermittent kind of smaller dues throughout the year as well. Um, and uh, as I say, they're great for not just networking with um, with people within your within your teams and office, um, but having having joint joint you know dues with with other offices as well. You really do get to meet a wide range of people from throughout the firm. Um, I mean, just on kind of a final point, I want to say, you know, we're really keen to bring in people who, um, who want to grow both professionally and personally. You know, our, our team members is what makes us money as a company. You know, we sell our, we sell our people. Um, and we want to ensure that, um, that people are coming in uh, are the right fit um, and bring the right atmosphere in, into, our, into our offices. And, and we're very kind of... Um, picky over over the people we bring in because we want that right atmosphere we want people to want to come into the offices we want people to come to work and look forward to to working together as a team um, and getting stuck in um, there's so much so much growth uh, even in, in the five years since i've joined um, the growth of the company and the way that the industry is evolving is so exciting um, and it's something that that now now's as good a time as ever to get in, get your foot in the door, and um, 
and really leave your mark on them uh, on the industry. Um, I, um, Thanks, I hope that's it. Yeah, say so I, I that's been a no, pretty comprehensive in the end. Uh, yeah, I think I think it absolutely has, and I think you're right. You know, for me, I you know the people are so important in terms of my how much I enjoy my job and I enjoy my job in terms of technically what I'm doing which is obviously very different to what your guys are doing but I think the principle is the same is you know I come to work in the morning and I've got a really fantastic team around me um, both you know from a people team perspective but also a wider McIntyre had some perspective as well that's always been my experience of the firm is people are friendly accommodating um, you know, and, and the partners are really approachable, which, you know, is, is great. So I'm just going to go to the Q&A box, if that's OK with you guys. Um, somebody has just asked, do we get a certificate at the end of this? So, Dan, do you want to answer that? Um, I'm assuming yeah, at the end sure. of the qualification. Yeah, so um, uh, you do. Uh, it was a bit, um, <laughs> you got an e electronic certificate over the last couple of years because, um, uh, the institutes uh, were not too keen on sending out paper copies, um, but they have been working through them. So I'm I'm actually waiting for my uh, my uh, my CTA certificate um, to arrive. Um, uh, I've been told within the next two weeks. I'm not holding out hope particularly, um, but sooner rather than later, hopefully. Um, nice shiny certificate. Um, it's going to uh, be hung up um, somewhere where everyone can see it because it's something I'm very proud of. Thanks, Dan. Um... And then this one for you, Abby. I mean, either can answer, but um, Abby, what made you choose tax over order? Um, so for me, a big selling point was the problem solving of it. Um, when, I, when I was looking for a job, a lot of the audit ones seemed to be almost like the same or similar thing every day. But the thing that sold it for me for tax was that it's a new problem every day that you've got to get to the bottom to. Um, no day will ever be the same in tax. You may do 30 tax returns, but they will all be different. There'll be something new. And it was also that you still get to build that client relationship with them. At audit, you're at a new client every week. But in tax, you could be speaking to the same client, you know, once a week for three months and you build up a really good relationship with them. And I just really like that familiarity with clients as well as being able to help them out. Yeah, and I think sometimes people are of the opinion that tax is specialising quite early on, but I think from what you guys have kind of demonstrated and talked about, it, it's specialist in as much as it's tax, but it's so broad in terms mm. of what you actually get involved in. So you're not getting involved in one very niche area of tax. You've got you've got that really broad scope, which is great. And somebody has just asked. Um, what are the requirements to apply and what is the interview process? So do you want me to answer on the entry criteria? Uh, yeah, I, 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 so I, think I, I think I can remember what it was from when I joined from sixth form, but I'm not sure if it's changed since then. This, so. this is a test, oh, Dan, God. so I am marking this. <laughs> go on then, go. Um, <laughs> so, uh, well, I don't, I can't remember how the point is translated, but I think it was a, a BBC or a BCC at A level. B, B, C. BBC at A level is the official entry criteria. However, you know, we, it's not hard and fast. So we look at the applications, we receive a trainee application form, which people fill out. Um, and as a recruitment team, we look at how well that's been filled out, how much effort somebody's gone to, if they just copied and pasted from the website, or if they've done a bit of research or thought about why they want to apply. So somebody hasn't necessarily quite met the, the grade boundaries. Equal, equally social mobility is really important and we take that into um, account as well so we, we we it's not hard and fast is all I would say on that um, and then you know we get we put people through verbal and numerical reasoning testing online uh, and then from there people are invited to assessment center again it's done a great application but they've um, wavered a little bit on the online testing it might be that we take you through to assessment center and then do a further assessment so we have a really high touch recruitment process and that's very deliberate. Um, you know, we are not looking for, we, we want diversity within our firm. We mentioned earlier about diversity of thinking and that starts from, you know, the recruitment stage and the people that we bring on. 
um, and we want people from loads of different backgrounds and, and different areas of education. We've had people that retrain. So we've got, you know, I had somebody in the assessment centre that is a physics teacher that wanted to retrain and, and go and do something else. We've had lawyers that have applied. Um, equally, we've had people that have been doing something, you know, music degrees that want to do. So, yeah, lots and lots of various backgrounds. So that is taken into account as we recruit. Um, let me just, so we've answered that live. Uh, Dan, you said you came uh, fresh out of sixth form. What, uh, sorry, what did he apply for at the firm and what qualifications did he gain? So I'll let you answer that, Dan. Uh, sure, so, um, so I applied uh, for, well, uh, I originally applied for rolling order actually. Um, but um, uh, but ended up kind of deciding that, that tax would be um, uh, more suited to, a, to to me as a person. Um, so the qualifications that I've gained from that, um, so the base tax qualification is called uh, the ATT, and that takes about eighteen to twenty four months to gain. And then once you completed that, you can go on to become a, a chartered tax advisor, um, which again is another kind of eighteen to twenty four months, depending on. Uh, you know, exam passes, etc. Um, so, um, so uh, base qualification is ATT. The chartered qualification is CTA. Dan just goes skipping around at 18 years old as a qualified CTA <laughs> with no student debt <laughs> <laughs> off to Grand Canaria. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, thank you for that, Dan. Um, so, Abby, what has been your most challenging client or problem to solve? Oh, that's a hard one. Or either of you, actually, or both. Um, I can think of a few. Yeah. <laughs> I had, earlier in the year, I had one that was causing me nightmares. <laughs> I did sleep, though, don't worry. <laughs> um, so it was a massive company restructure. They were wanting to, um, that, so they had a company that had two different things going on in it, and they wanted to take one part of the company and sell it off but um it's not as easy as just saying oh, i want to sell i want to sell all of that so we had to <laughs> reshuffle the company but there was you know there was different financing involved in that they had bank loans they were based in wales which have different tax laws and it it just i mean it only finished a couple of weeks ago so yeah that kept me up at night but um <laughs> once it was done it was a massive relief off my shoulders i think dan's had some similar cases <laughs> I mean, you know, through the course of our work, we see some really, really technically challenging stuff, um, but we help each other through it. You know, we have, we have a great management team um, and some really, you know, some really, really, uh, you know, great individuals and specialists throughout the firm um, to help on these harder questions. You know, the, the size of firm we are, no question is too technical. You know, we'll answer everything. And, um, and again, I mean, that feeds into diversity of workload, et cetera. Um, but we tackle the big problems together. Um, they're, you know, they're hard, but difficult stuff. But we, ta we tackle it together, and we um, and we and we get to the finish line, um, and that's uh, that's what we're about. Thank you. Um, and then somebody's just asked, uh, should they show their interest in tax on their CV to be more successful in getting a role? And are there graduate roles available? So, are tax roles you can be graduate or school leaver? Um, so yes, in short, there are graduate roles available. Um, what do you think, guys, in terms of what somebody should consider putting on their CV to make their application more attractive? Do you think? Uh, I mean, I always think the you know ta tax is so broad; it's hard to just kind of you know go and go and put, you know write a paragraph about oh this is what I'm interested in tax. Um, I think looking looking into the qualifications and kind of researching the qualifications and asking questions about the qualifications definitely. Uh, provide the springboard um, because at the end of the day you know going into a, a new industry if you haven't worked in, in finance before um, you want to be all, all eyes and ears you want to learn and um, you know and there's a there's an understanding that people are going to come in they're not going to know tax you know tax isn't taught in schools um, so it, you know there's an understanding that you're going to come in and, you, and you're going to want to learn but we want people who are going to absorb information and who are you know really keen to um, uh, to learn new skills and um and, and you know get their get their head down and um and we we'll get stuck in. Yeah, and Does that answer that question? Yeah, I was just going to say another thing for me would be um thinking about your key skills, thinking about what what Dan and I have said, 
and just sort of when you go in through your CV, think about what skills you've learned over the years that really seem to focus in on tax. So the problem solving, the communication, I think they really stand out because they're really key in tax compared to, well, they're still useful in audit and stuff, but I think they make you stand out from the crowd. Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the things to keep in mind is at this stage with an entry level role, for I can only ever speak for us as an organisation and, and for me in the job that I do is I'm always looking for somebody's approach to things and their attitude towards it. The hard skills is exactly what we're looking to teach um, and, and the soft skills to a degree with the um, client interactions that you have. But, you know, I have we have failed people at assessment centre because they haven't supported people within that assessment centre and worked as a team and had the right attitude even though they've been bright and capable we want more than that we want bright capable and you know collaborative and passionate like you can see Abby and Dan are and that's you know that for us is really really important so if somebody came to me and said I'm not sure what I want to do but I'm really keen and I love the sound of your company and here's the research I've done that that would be enough for me really and ask questions of the recruitment teams I always say to people you know it's not the recruitment inbox is not a black hole I promise you if you've got questions like we are really really happy to help even if you don't end up applying for McIntyre Hudson if we can help and support we will do Okay, I'm just gonna see if we've got any other questions. I don't think we've got any other questions in the Q&A. Um, Dan, Abby, thank you so much. And thanks to the marketing team that are behind the scenes running the webinar, not letting me loose on the technology, which is a really good idea. Um, but thanks ever so much for taking your time. And for, the, for those that have joined, I hope you've got some useful information out of the session today. As previously stated, the recruitment inbox is a good place to direct any further questions if you think of anything afterwards. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. And I wish everybody a good rest of your evening. <laughs>